All right, guys, we got uh, picking up here in the middle of this motorcycle tank project at the underground garage. Uh, this thing has been, it's already been, there's been a bunch of body work to it. It's been in epoxy primer, then it's been in high build primer, then it's been blocked. High build primer again, blocked again, that kind of stuff. There's already been a lot of work done to it. So what we're going to do today is uh, it's ready to go into what I call final primer uh, or final prime. So once you put it in final prime, it's done, it's ready to go, it's ready to go to paint after that. So that's the stage that we're at right now. Um, kind of picking up in the middle of the project. Sorry, I didn't, didn't document the rest of the stuff, but you know, man, whatever. So here it is. The primer that we're gonna use on it is a high build 2K primer. There's another little short video uh, about the, the primer, if you guys wanna check that out. Uh, but I'll go ahead and document the process from here on out. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the primer ready and, uh, and get this thing in, in final prime. All right, we're getting ready to uh, mix up the final coat of primer for a motorcycle tank. I'm gonna use uh, just this high build primer, uh, this hardener, and then I'm gonna reduce it a little bit. Um, I keep all my tech sheets right up here. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera or not. Uh, but on this particular one, here it is. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can mix it. Um, it says for high build applications, it, you guys can read the tech sheet, whatever. But I'm going to mix this four to one to one is what I'm going to do. This primer settles out really bad. It's really important that you mix it really well. Uh, I've been using this stuff uh, today, yesterday, all that stuff. So this particular gallon has been mixed and stirred and shaken and all that shit. So it's it's pretty well mixed up. Uh, if this had been sitting on the shelf for a couple weeks or a couple months, you need to spend a lot more time stirring it, a lot more time shaking it. it just make sure it's mixed up. It's got to be mixed up. The activator, the hardener, you're going to hear it called activator, you're going to hear it called hardener, you're going to hear it called catalyst. It's all the same thing. Uh, actually, it's not the same thing. They're just different terms for the same type of product. That's whatever you've got to add to the primer, to the paint, whether it's an activator, a catalyst, a hardener, whatever. You're going to hear it called all kinds of stuff, but that's what it is. It's the additive that goes in the paint. Um, this stuff you shouldn't have to stir. I usually take them and turn them over once or twice just in case. Uh, I don't think there's anything in there that settles out, but that's something I do. Just mix that up real good. Um, kind of what I do is I mix it. I count in my head. Um, you probably can't hear it on the camera, but every time the stick comes around, it smacks the side of the cup and makes a little noise. I count those little ticks, um, and I count 50 one way, and then I switch and I go the other way. I go 50 both ways. It's usually what I do. Uh, there's some, some of the products out there will give you some more specific instructions on the tech sheet. Um, some of them will say they require like a mechanical agitation for five minutes, stuff like that. So this one doesn't say anything like that. So we just want to make sure it's mixed up really well. Go ahead and strain it into the gun. I do it I wear a hat backwards because it keeps my hair back it keeps my any hair from falling out of my head and landing in the, the shit all right all right uh, we just got our first coat of primer on our motorcycle tank uh, you can see how shiny that is that'll actually dry dull and once we've got a, a little bit more dull finish on it uh, we'll go ahead and put a second coat on it we have one little Probably won't even show up on the camera. Yeah, 
you can't see it on the camera, but there is one tiny, one tiny defect um, right there. Maybe you can't see it. There's a little ripple right there. Uh, that will block out, hopefully. So we'll go ahead and address that if and when. Uh, let's go ahead and let it dry and get the other coat on it. Our tank has been wet sanded with 400 grit sandpaper and one of those soft sponge blocks. Uh, then it was wiped off using rubbing alcohol and uh, a clean, dry, you know, lint-free, tack-free rag. So um, I use rubbing alcohol instead of prep solvent for a couple of reasons. There's another little video about that if you guys want to check that out and see why I do that. So, but uh, let's get the paint mixed up and uh, and get going. Getting ready to mix up the paint for that motorcycle tank. Um, this is uh, pretty straightforward stuff, man. Uh, follow the tech sheet for mixing it. Uh, this paint is black, and it's a special black that the paint store mixes for me that has no, no other colors in it, no toners other than black. A lot, of, uh, a lot of the colors out there today that are black, they've got a lot of brown toner or maybe some blue toner, so it's not actually a legit just black black where this is. This is just black. There's no other toner. Or anything in there so that's uh, that's what we're going to use and we're going to make this thing black this is a, a base coat clear coat setup so this is the base coat uh, the guy I'm doing this job for actually just paid for a single stage paint job didn't really pay for any of the body work or any of that kind of stuff. But we're doing that stuff anyway. I mean, we're going to give them a better quality, better lasting job by doing this, uh, this base coat, clear coat setup. Because that's, you know, it's the kind of guy we are. That's what you got to do, man. see that that's just a just a black 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 there's no a lot of the blacks today they actually have more like a coffee like a black coffee type of color to them which is actually a really dark brown as opposed to just a straight black so we're just straight black again please wear a mask We're just about ready to go. Uh, just wet the floor down. Uh, wetting the floor down just keeps the dust down, helps get a cleaner job. There's less debris in the paint when you're done. Uh, also, and if you've got any static, uh, static electricity on your car, on your parts, anything like that will draw the dust and debris out of the air and it'll want to stick to it. Uh, so getting the floor wet helps eliminate the static. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to take this thing. This is a tack rag. Uh, when I first started doing this stuff, I didn't know what a tack rag was. I'd heard about tack rags, or they told me to use a tack rag, but I didn't really know what it was. What it is, it's just a piece of uh, real fine cloth, like uh, like cheesecloth, or uh, just a really fine cloth, and it's got a like a sticky kind of stuff on it, just a sticky goo. And what you want to do, uh, what we'll do before we paint these, is just real lightly rub this tack rag over these parts. Uh, and what that will do is if there's any dust, any kind of debris, any, any, anything at all, it'll hopefully stick to this tack rag and we'll lift it off of our parts. The, uh, you need to be careful when you do this, don't press very hard because you don't want the stick them from the rag to stick to your parts. You just want to lightly brush over the parts and pick up any kind of, any kind of loose dust or debris sanding dust anything like that that may be on them so see that there that's what happens when you don't when you don't hook your parts down see i was rubbing it with the tack rag i bumped it and it fell fortunately i caught it so it didn't hit our wet dirty floor um 
But when you're painting, the air coming out of the gun, you know, it sprays it. Different guys use different pressures, but we'll say 30 PSI. So you're hitting these with 30 PSI air. So they've got to be securely attached uh, to your table, to your bars, to your stands, whatever you're using, or you're going to knock them off and you're going to mess up your paint job and have to start over. So there's a little lesson right there. I got lucky because I caught it, but I'm going to go ahead and strap that down. And, uh, and we'll go ahead and get these things in paint. All right, we're getting ready to paint these motorcycle parts, specifically the tank. That's what this video has been about. Uh, they're going to be kind of hard to see. They're a little ways away, but anyway. Uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, I'm using a base coat, clear coat setup. I'm getting ready to shoot the base coat. So the base coat, if you watch the uh, What Are 2K Products video, the base coat is mixed up. It's uh, it's mixed up a paint and a reducer. That reducer is a solvent, and a lot of guys use that to clean guns or clean other products, just clean stuff off because it is a solvent. So when you spray that on these parts, you're actually spraying solvent directly on the parts. So what we want to do, the first coat, I'm going to do really really light because I want to get some paint on the product before that solvent really has a chance to attack. The, uh, the primer and all that stuff underneath it. So we want to go ahead and go nice and light on the first coat just to get a barrier layer of paint down. And once we've got the barrier layer of paint, we'll go ahead and uh, you can come back pretty heavy uh, with the other coats. So this should only take, uh, I'm going to do three, uh, I think. Now we'll kind of see how it covers out one light one and then two, two medium wet coats. So, but I'm just going to let the camera run while I go ahead and do this. And, uh, and, uh, and that's it. It's time to go. So let's uh, let's do it. All right, that's it. All right, here's all our parts in base coat. Uh, the base coat is dry to the touch. Uh, there's uh, one little defect in the base right there. So I'm gonna rub over it with a tack rag real light. And looks like a, you can still see it, it's real pronounced in the video, but it uh, the clear will hide that. It's uh, It's not a very, very intense kind of defect. So we're just going to come back. We'll tack all this stuff off. Um, we'll get over here to the tank, which is what this video is mainly about. So we'll get our tank tacked off. And then it, uh, the clear is really hard on, on the camera, or in this case, my iPhone. So we're not going to, uh, I'm not going to video the clear because I don't want the clear getting all over the phone. So, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get this stuff cleared. All right, we're getting ready to mix up the clear for our motorcycle tank. Uh, we're going to use this clear, this hardener, and then, like I said, I don't know, maybe I didn't. The guy wants a, a fairly glossy finish, not a super high gloss uh, like a new car would be. He's looking for more of a, a semi-gloss type of finish but on the upper end of semi uh, so what we're going to do this stuff you can add this stuff into the clear and that'll help knock the shine out of the clear so that's what we're going to do we're going to mix up some of this right now
you're wondering what I did, um, got two holes in the can, so the stuff, the, the remaining product in that rim will run out those holes. Um, so it just creates less of a mess when I put this all back together. So uh, the cans, when they're really full like that, are kind of a pain to pour out of, but you guys know that. So. With, uh, I mixed up 18 ounces of clear total. And uh, this stuff here, to achieve, uh, depending on how much gloss you want, you add whatever amount of this. Uh, if you want no gloss, uh, you're going to go about 50 ounces of this to a gallon of clear. Uh, a gallon is 128 ounces, so you're like almost a little better than 30%. Um, I mixed up 18 ounces of clear, and uh, I only added um, 22 total, so that's roughly uh, not quite 20%, maybe 18%, because I didn't want to knock very much of the shine out of it. So. Here is our motorcycle tank after clear coat. The clear is about a half an hour old. Uh, if you look here, you can kind of see me and you can see that my garage door is open behind me. Well, if you look at the reflection of the garage door there at the bottom of the door, you can see it's slightly rippled. There's a couple little ripples in it. Well, obviously my garage door is not rippled. That is some orange peel in the clear that we put on this thing. So the, uh, it's very, very minor. And also the clear is only about a half an hour old, so it will still flatten out some as gravity pulls on it while it dries. Uh, if you come up here to the top, the top of it is, there's no orange peel at all. It laid down just like glass. It's, it's virtually flawless. So very pleased with how the clear laid down on these parts, especially this tank. And what we can do, or what we will do, my tech sheet told me that this clear needs to sit for 16 hours. So we're going to let this sit overnight, we'll come back out tomorrow, and any kind of dust or any imperfections that we find in the clear uh, tomorrow, I'll go ahead and I'll sand them out, and then I'll, I'll polish it as well, and I'll document that process a little later in the video. So that's, uh, that's what we got going on, I'm very happy with everything, and I hope you guys, I hope this helps somebody out there.